Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about Java. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, should one learn Java even though it's being less frequently used today? Well, I suppose that that depends. Have you done your homework? Like I've told you. Because if you haven't done your homework, this question will be an absolute mystery to you. But if you have done your homework, you should know whether or not Java is the choice for you. And homework means, number one, asking the question, what is it that I want to build? What is the purpose of what I want, to want with my programming language? And the second thing will be, what is popular in my region of the world? Those are the only two things that matter. They are the only things that will ever matter for a professional software developer. The only time these, the, the only time, literally the only time this, these rules are not absolute is if it doesn't really matter what people are looking for in your region because you're looking to to uh, build something very specific something that requires a special type of language or is better produced in another type of language but for job purposes which is the common case here and since you're actually stating that y y your concern is that Java is being less frequently used then I'm assuming that uh, it is for job purposes you are asking. And so the thing is that it is true that Java is getting less popular. If you look at the trends and the relevancy of Java, it has been steadily dropping for the last, uh, at least the last five years. And I don't see that ever changing. Uh, the uh, Java is a language that is, n I don't think there is any discussion that it's a dying language but that in of itself doesn't really say much because just because something is being less used or being less popular it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not going to be around I mean we still have many of the older languages in production code today such as say COBOL and there are still people who work with COBOL there are still systems being built with it and the same thing is true for Java. I know for a fact that there are really, really big companies who are investing into the Java platform. And trust me when I say this, the investment that they are making, that's not for the next five years. It's for the next 20 or 30 years. So you kind of have to ask yourself, how how much foresight are you going to use? Because I, we get, I get a lot, quite a few of these questions where there is someone who's asking how do I pick the next language how do I future proof my career and I keep on telling these people that your your ability to maintain a steady income and go really far in software development has nothing practically at the very least to do which uh, with which language you pick especially not the first one it doesn't matter for shit dudes Apart from the, the the reason it matters is because it is your entry point into the engineering world. It is going to set the tone for quite some time for you, and it's going to shape you as a developer. But the fundamentally, the thing that's going to future-proof you, or the thing that's going to make you popular in the job market, is if you have one part relevant skills, but also the sort of developer you are. Are you a talented developer? And being a talented developer is more, it's much more than just knowing the right language. There's so much more to it. Everything from soft skills to understanding practices and understand, uh, taking greater responsibilities within the workplace to structuring work and being able to c effectively communicate with people. All of these things factor in and they all make up a solid senior developer. And that's just something that seems to be very hard to explain to someone who is... Uh, and I mean, I, I, I'm, I don't blame you, and uh, not at all, because I used to think that way as well when I was a junior. I really believed 
that the thing that was most important was to pick was picking the right language and then getting really good at that language and I can tell you I can only tell you that sure that does matter to a certain point but it is not the only thing that you need to do correctly in order to make a success out of yourself as a software developer so what I want you to take away from this is that I s absolutely think that you should learn Java if it turn if it's if you've done your homework and if you've done your homework you know what you want to be uh, to build and if Java is a language that people are using to build that thing then that's check number one check number two is going to be have you looked at the job postings have you have a, uh, had a look do you know if people are actually asking for Java developers? It's a, is it a popular language in your region? Because I can tell you that so this, uh, for Java, this decline has been going on for at least five years, more, more likely ten years. And it's not going to go up, most likely. It's going to keep on dropping until a point where it stables out. But even at that point, there are still people who are going to look for Java developers, just that there are still people who are looking for COBOL developers. It really comes down to how far will Java fall before it get, becomes a bit unfeasible for the average developer to find job opportunities in that language. But just as if a company such as, say, Google or Microsoft or whatever super company started to decline, you have to understand, guys, that a behemoth in anything within industry takes years to die most of the time. It's not something that happens overnight. It takes a long time to bankrupt a uh, really big um, part of industry. And Java is the biggest, or at least it was, the biggest behemoth in industry. So it's not going to, uh, I can promise you, it's very likely that even if you bet on Java today, that you're going to stay gainfully employed or find opportunities for the rest of your life. Have a great day.